None of this would have been possible without the generosity of this country and my kin of the skies, lands, and the waters. I acknowledge the Turbo and Yagara people, the traditional custodians of this land on which this work was made, and all of our ancestors that have brought us to this point today. Once upon a time, many, many times, I came upon the great banyan tree. As I walked in the botanic gardens out there, it teleported me to many places, to the golden beeves of the saris, to the great temples of Amritsar, to the monasteries of the Himalayas. I asked myself, what is this mighty beast of the Indian subcontinent doing out here? How did it get here? And then I learned, similar to me and many others here today, it had come on a boat over 100 years ago, and it had made a home here for itself and for many other beings. If I shared history and kinship with this tree, me, a child of post-colonialism and migration, a woman of color, were there others who shared ties with this great God? If yes, what would make it possible to document these entanglements, to gather these stories, to simply learn? What would make it possible for others to listen to these histories? With identity, gender, and community at its core, those questions became the driving force of the project. Using smartphone technology, the project began as an exploration of collective storytelling of migrations, oppressions, of being the other on this land, of telling tales of the non-humans, such as the banyan tree. The project evolved to become Transhuman Santo. This project is a place-based artwork that documents the entanglements of four women artists with the multi-species ecosystem of the Indian banyan tree with the assistance of geolocative technology. The project has four women, four women of color. Akapetos from Samoa, Lan from Vietnam, Naput Simon of Thailand, and finally Natasha of India. They weave their stories digitally across the land of Mianjin. The core of the work lives in city botanic gardens where foreign non-human beings such as the banyan tree were brought in almost as if to eradicate what was there before. I expand next on each of the four artists' exploration on the relationship with the banyan tree, what it means for themselves to have come across from different lands, to have made a home here, to have lost a people, to have waited, to have watched silently. For Akapetos, the banyan tree is the Simone traditional tattoo on her body. The roots of the tree are the motif of the tattoos, each motif a historical record of where she comes from and where she is going. In her saunter, Akapetos shares what it means for the tattoo to have guided her to have found home on this country, Mianjin. Lan Saunter asks the question, what does it mean to be a migrant being? What does it mean to be constantly reminded of temporality, of exoticism? She straddles, stretches, and blends the many lines between present and past, between war and peace, of developing and developed status of countries, and of better beings and lesser beings. Naput Simone's work explores the symbiosis, clash, and the clash of North-South knowledge traditions in what makes the banyan tree valuable, that its worth has to be quant quantified in euros, rupees, or dollars. In her saunter, she explores the value of a tree in data visualization through the alternating lens of the Buddhist ecology movement in Thailand. And finally, Natasha dispenses off the colonial overtones of the word banyan and instead offers the term kalpa riksha, where kalpa means time and riksha is a tree. It is indeed a tree that surpasses time. In her saunter, Natasha acknowledges the banyan tree along with the other trees particularly the native flora and fauna in this pilgrimage around the city botanic gardens. In the participatory making of the saunters, the artists spoke of learning a new method of art making, learning from each other, being able to explore their own positionality within Australia, and that the project offered them space for sense making and personal reflection. Those who took the saunter spoke of the invaluable lesson of and on the tree that otherwise stood quietly in Brisbane's landscape. Technology served to transcend boundaries of the human, lesser human, and non-human, of dominant beings and the subordinate, and of history and she story.
Thus, this project offers other ways of knowing and learning through techno-enhanced walks as an avenue of making lesser humans and non-humans unheard and otherwise inaccessible stories visible during contested and volatile times. But why does this project matter? Why should we care? This project matters because it asks us to do the tough and difficult task of imagining, to imagine and to know that this is a being that exists beyond human understanding, that when we even consider chopping it down, we are destroying centuries of knowledge and a deep time of carefully constructed relationships. We are er eradicating not just an ecosystem, but with our bloodlines connected to it, we are eradicating ourselves. I hand over now back to Marianello.